Rise and shine, mothers and brothers and cheese wedges and handlebars and chin straps all over the world. Thank you for joining me on my ride to work. George Bruno, also known as the Sultan of Silver, here with you. Raining, testing out my new windshield wiper blades by Rain-X. And holy cow, I'm looking at these babies, man. It's pouring rain right now, Philly. Pouring rain and these suckers are working unbelievable. I'll tell you what, sometimes it's worth it to buy something that's just a higher quality and has better ratings. These wipers are amazing as much as it's, as it's uh, raining right now. I mean, literally there's no streaking, there's nothing. These are, it's perfect, holy cow, I'm looking at them right now. Perfect. And it's funny, they're not making as much noise as like the cheaper ones wow interesting that's that's an interesting observation some good possible good news coming out of uh, nashville if you have any idea what that might be put a comment down below uh, nothing definitive yet but i'll let you know anyways a couple things this is the beginning of my work week. I am going to be pretty dead set on watching my food intake. And I will tell you right now, I two weeks ago I had my first doctor appointment in a long time. My numbers were horrible to the point where they were warning me. I mean, they ha like my medical records have an official warning. Like you could die if this doesn't change, you are at an incredible risk for a stroke and heart attack. Now that's motivation now, isn't it? And the weird thing is, I look fit. I'm not ripped, but I'm fairly, you know, I'm athletic looking. My chest is bigger than my waist. My arms and triceps are in good shape. I, you know, I look like I'm athletic. The scary thing is this, is that the numbers were horrible. Hold on, let me close this window a little bit. I actually have roll down windows, man. This car is so old. This car is like the man, it's ancient. Ancient. It's an old head, but I love it. When I put high miles on a vehicle, I drive until they die, man. When I put high miles on a vehicle, I feel like I'm getting away with something. I feel like I'm hacking the system that tells you that you need to get a new car, you know, every couple years. This sucker is paid off, baby, paid off. You know what it, You know what this car cost me? Gas, that's it, gas. And it's a Toyota, which means it's very little gas and the maintenance is insanely low. I've been looking at new cars. Yesterday, I was, or two days ago, I was looking at Fiat's. I love the car. It's getting about three to four out of five stars on most of your review sites. God, I sat in it. It just felt wonderful. It's tiny, gets about 40 miles a gallon, uh, but drives like a bigger car. Quite an incredible vehicle, the Fiat 500. So I'm just debating on what I want to get. I, I shop for a long time and I do my research way before I pull the trigger on anything. Two things I want to talk to you about. If you are in a business where you are managing people, leading people, remember the other day we said people want to be, people want to be led, they don't want to be managed, and that they're silently begging to be led. Here's a couple techniques that I have found that make for just a nicer leadership experience. There is uh, a couple different ways of handling people. One, one way is called feel, felt, found. I used to do, when I had employees, I used to do these things, um, uh, what I called SCI meetings, which stands for sharing concerns and ideas. And I did it with people quarterly where they never had to feel like nothing was recorded. 
I only took notes on positive things, not negative things. And they could share whatever they want. Honestly, if they said, you know what, the ties that you wear bother me. That's That was game, sharing concerns and ideas. And I wanted ideas from the frontline people, the people who were taking phone calls, the people who were dealing directly with consumers. I wanted that. In my case, it was patience, uh, dealing with patients in the uh, medical field. So here's a, during the SCI meetings, sharing concerns and ideas, quarterly SCI meetings, it was one of the best practices that I ever instituted in my career because it helped build a bridge to my employees on a regular basis. If uh, someone was all stressed out, they were coming in late for work, and rather than be like, you know, you got to be on time, which, you know, I want people to be on time, but let's say they were caring for an elderly parent whose health was failing, or they had to consistently go to doctor appointments, or if they were a personal caretaker for a parent or a family member where they had to literally take the person to the bathroom and, and do personal cleansing and put a diaper and, and bathe somebody. All right, police come in. So put on your flashers and you pull over. All right, you come back out. That's the proper protocol when you see flashing lights behind you unless they're actually pulling you over. Then you pull over like a good person and you put your hands on the wheel like this, where they can see your hands. That's important. Police officer's job is one of the hardest jobs in the world. Make their job easy for them. They don't get paid a heck of a lot. There's police officers getting paid $26,000 a year. Some of the smaller towns. $26,000 a year to put your life on the line for 40 to 50 hours a week. And especially now. That's a rough job. And then when, you, when you're tenured, you know, you might be making 70000 after 22 years on the force. It's, you know. So, show some love to the blue, man. They keep you safe. If you're hating on the blue, then don't you dare call 911 when you got a problem. Because those dudes are there within a couple minutes. Alright? So, a couple cops passed the place where I work. I ran out and thanked them, shook their hand and thanked them for their service. I said, thank you for your service, man. I really, really appreciate it. And this was after a lot of the nonsense that's been happening in the States in the past few weeks. And uh, he says, thank you for your beard. <laughs> that was so funny. He says, he goes, I can't grow one now. He goes, but when I retire, man, I want a beard like yours. And I said, all right, that's, that's cool. So thank the blue man. Don't be hating on them. Love them up, okay? Their job is harder than you can imagine. So here's the deal. SCI meetings, listening to people builds a bridge. It doesn't, it tears down walls automatically. You don't have to, this is how you tear walls down. You build bridges. You don't have to work at tearing walls down. Build a bridge and the wall comes down naturally, okay? That's important when you're working with people, with employees. So when I would, in the SCI meetings, um, if I, it wasn't my turn to school anyone. It was my turn to listen as they shared freely. Key is freely shared. SCI meetings, quarterly SCI meetings. But here's the deal. One of the ways of dealing with grievances is this. It's called the feel, felt, found technique. F3, feel, felt, found. And it has to be genuine. And if you use this technique, without a genuine, clear heart. If you use it manipulatively to manipulate people, then it's, it actually can do more damage than, than good. Feel felt found is responding. It's number one, you're, you're affirming a person's complaint. You know, I know how you feel. Or you can say, I, I don't know how you feel, but I definitely can sympathize with you and I can see the pain that it's causing you. So you know how they feel. Some people say, I feel you, man. Felt. You let them know that they're not alone. 
I I feel for you, and I, I know how you feel. And you, you only say, I know how you feel, if you've been in a situation similar to that. Then it's genuine. If you're lying through your teeth, resign that day. Just get out. Because truth prevails. And you can lead and be led much better than... Um, or I should say, you can lead. You can lead better if if you're truthful. If you can't be truthful, then you're better off being led and letting someone lead you and set an example until you are mature enough or are able to make the proper decisions to be truthful in all of your leadership. I know how you feel. Number two is this. Others have felt the same way. Many others have felt the same thing. So you're letting them know that they're not alone. And then the last part, found. However, I found that when people have done X, Y, Z, or A, B, C, that that problem resolved itself. However, I have found that when I experienced it in my life, if I don't respond quickly, if I think on it, if I sleep on it, things tend to get better and that I don't, I don't get caught up in the emotions and the hormones and the, the chemical nature of the moment. Feel, felt, found. Can take a tense situation, bring it right down. Leadership skills. I didn't know this when I was 25 years old. I didn't know this when I... I'll tell you when I learned it. I learned feel, felt, found when I was 32. Now I'm closer to 60 than I am to 50. So, which means I've been practicing this for over 20 years. And the people who have worked for me have said it's the most inspiring time, the most challenging time, the most fun time, and the hardest time that they've ever had in their whole life, all wrapped into one. You want that kind of balance. You don't want you don't want to just build a team of like, yeah, he's the best. Because you're not the best. You might be the best at certain things, but you're not the best in everything. And leadership is a learning experience. It's kind of swaying with the wind, not breaking. You ever see palm trees, how they blow in the wind? And all <laughs> the palm trees are all like at, at an angle. It's better to be flexible than to be stiff, as the great pastor of Calvary Chapel of Costa Mesa said. His name is Chuck Smith, a man who changed my life many years ago. He said this, and I'll never forget it. He told me when I was a young man, Blessed are the flexible, for they shall not be broken. Let me say that again. Blessed are the flexible, for they shall not be broken. It's true. Leadership lesson number two. When you have a customer service complaint, and you can use this in employee relations as well, think about this. Listen, affirm, fix, and forget. L-A-F-F. -F. And I learned these two things from a very wise person when I was 32 years old. She was the administrative assistant to the CEO of a hospital where I was a director of marketing. Very wise woman. My God, I got to track her down and let her know that her simple lessons have changed my leadership style over the years and it led to some really good things. I wish I, I applied them a lot professionally. There was a lot of things that I didn't apply personally. And I guess as you get older, you kind of learn to have a flow between the two. Listen to the person, just two ears, one mouth, which means that you listen twice as much as you talk. Two, affirm, yes, it's very similar to the feel, felt, found. You affirm, listen, affirm. It's laugh, L-A-F-F. -F. Listen, affirm, yes, I hear you, okay, all right. No judgment, no constructive criticism at this, at this point. F is fix. I'm going to fix that. I'm going to take personal responsibility. I am going to deal with it. 
I'm not going to talk to my manager. You know, I hate that whole thing. Well, let me talk to my manager. Damn it. Screw the manager. Fix it yourself. If you are in a position to make a customer happy, do it. I would rather have you go before a disciplinary board for pleasing a customer or a client or a patient or whoever than to live with the history of not making your consumer, your client, your guest happy. Listen, affirm, fix, I will take care of it. All they need, it's one-stop shopping. The client, customer, patient, guest needs to talk to one person. They don't want to hear, let me talk to my manager, let me make a phone, no what? Guess what, they want to know this, you're going to fix it. It's done. And then guess what? Even if they are a prick, even if they are a pain in your ass, you forget it. Listen, affirm, fix, and forget. Laugh. Write those things down. Today's lesson, feel felt found, F3, and leadership lesson number two. Listen, affirm, fix, and forget. Laugh. Those two things will get you further than any MBA, I guarantee it. Apply them in your life, in your leadership. Seek to be a leader, not a follower. Have goals, have one little goal. My goal is to get my blood pressure down and get my weight down. My weight, getting my weight down is going to control my sugar and control my blood pressure. My doctor didn't threaten me with death and a stroke, although she told me that very well could happen. This is the issue, is that she threw the gauntlet down. She dared me. She dared me, so I got three months to get down to 185 to 90 pounds, and I know everything else will just level out from there as far as the physical symptoms. So keep that in mind, man. Allow yourself, rewire your brain to respond to the gauntlet. Dares. I dare you to lose weight. I dare you to save $5,000 this summer. I dare you to put $2,000 in the bank, which means you don't go out, which means you smoke less, drink less, eat less outside, eat less restaurant food. I dare you. I mean, whatever your number is, there's people watching this video right now who are living in, in yurts in apartments, in huts, in high-rises, fancy houses, in church parsonages, every socioeconomic level. I, you're, you are from Iran, Italy, Arizona, Florida, Indiana, Maine, Pennsylvania, California, Australia, New Zealand, England, Ireland, Scotland. I know because I get your emails every single day and I'm thrilled about it. Truly an international audience. Apply these principles, man. You are going to succeed. My name is George Bruno, also known as the Sultan of Silver. On Instagram, at George A. Bruno. On Facebook, as George Bruno Luxury Hair Experience. You can call me Bruno, that's fine. In the hair world, they know me as Bruno. On LinkedIn, if you want to do business with me somehow, some way, put our heads together and make money. Let's create revenue. We're going to do it. You let me know what your ideas are, and I'll get those going in my brain. Follow me on LinkedIn if you're in business. My name is George Bruno. My website, georgebruno.com, and my blog video blog is Gray Bailey on YouTube. It's going to be a fantastic day, man. This is the first day of my work week. My blood pressure is low. My weight is down 10 pounds. I am feeling good. The beard is on point. Got my brand new apron with me, I think. You know what? I forgot my apron. Son of a gun. I got so excited about everything that I forgot my damn apron. I, I wanted to wear my apron today. My Knife and flag apron. A little shout out to knife and flag. Rather than getting pants filled with everyone else's hair that empties out, 
when I change when I get home. That's why barbers wear barber jackets. That's why stylists wear aprons and, and smocks and that type of thing. People in the hair industry, we don't like carrying other people's hair home. So like when you have like these cuffs, I always roll up my sleeves. You unroll your sleeves at night, guess what falls out of them? A bunch of hair. You take your pants off, guess what falls out? Everyone else's hair. What's in your shoes? Everyone else's hair. Believe me, if you don't brush off and sweep off, you're eating hair when you sit down and have dinner. So I've desensitized myself to that years ago. Hair is a part of my life. I don't intentionally want to eat hair. If I find a hair in my food, man, it grosses me out. All right, get out there, kill it, man. Lead, don't follow. Lead, don't manage, because you are silently begging to be led. Be number one, man, and be yourself.